Okay, thank you very much, brother. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم اللعين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم uh, Sisters and brothers in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I'm pleased to be with you today uh, commemorating uh, the death uh, of uh, the esteemed brother, uh, brother Koshu Fazl, the son of Ghulam Ali Fazl. Um, and inshallah, the topic for today's uh, discussion, inshallah, will be uh, five things to do before we die. It is uh, important, my dear brothers and sisters, that uh, the the death of our dearest uncle uh, is a reminder, serves as a reminder for us all that this life is very much temporary. This life is very much one that um, we cannot take uh, very uh, seriously, uh, you know, accumulate wealth and accumulate uh, focus on uh, on the dunya much, but also we do need to think about uh, the akhirah, think about the the our fate, think about our everlasting uh, position um, in in you know after death. And death is a reality. We've seen that with with the demise of the dear uncle. We've seen that with the demise of so many people uh, in this very very uh, disturbing time that the whole world is going through this pandemic. We've, we've, we know people who have died. We know uh, individuals who have lost their lives because of COVID uh, and because of uh, other reasons. And death is natural, of course. Death is a necessity. Uh, one must die. And this is something that uh, no two people can disagree with. Uh, this, is, this is, you know, when you come and discuss these particular issues with people, th there is a fact here. And everyone, uh, unless they are, they are uh, deluded, uh, one has to accept that death is a reality. Death is a fact. Now, for us as mu'mineen, death ser serves as a, um, a, a, a final stop at the end of our trial uh, in this, in this uh, land, in this, in this life, in this dunya. Um, and... Uh, some of us travel for a long time. Some of, some of us travel until our 90s and maybe we hit 100. Some of us travel very, very little. Some of, uh, some of us die when we are very young. Uh, some people die when they are in their 30s. Some people die when they're 40s, 50s, 60s, etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written a particular age for every single one of us. However, the main question here, my dear brothers and sisters, is what can we do to prepare for that inevitable day? Remember, it's a fact, it's an inevitable day. Whether it's tonight, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's the day after, whether it's in a month, a year, two, three, ten years, whatever, it is a must and it is a fact. Malakul Maut, the angel of death, will come, right? He might be uh, coming around soon or he might come later. And he visited... Uh, our dearest uncle um, uh, at that particular time, around 10 days ago. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the soul uh, of, of our dear uncle. But it could be us in the future. And it has to be us. It has to be us. So the question here, my dear brothers and sisters, is that when we go through a, a death experience uh, with our relative uh, or a friend that we know, um, it must serve a reminder. There is a, a narration from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. He says, I want you to remember udhkuru uh, hadim al-laddat. He said, I want you to remember always uh, the destroyer of, leisure, of, of pleasures, the destroyer of pleasures. And they said, what is this destroyer of pleasures, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? He said, this is death, 
right? Death is the destroyer of pleasures. Whenever we remember death, it destroys any sort of lust or, or any, anything that we, um, you know, excessive lust, of course. Pleasure is, is important in life, whatever. Uh, it must not exceed, of course, uh, the, it must not be excessive and does not red, cross the red line uh, of uh, our Sharia. So therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, today I have set a reminder for myself and for you, inshallah, five things that we can uh, remind ourselves with and five things that we should really, really, as soon as possible, don't wait, don't think that if you are a youth, you the death will not come to you. We saw with uh, a brother, brother Nur Ali, Aqil, I think Nur Ali, uh, who uh, a, a very young boy, um, a lawyer, a solicitor, who, who died uh, around a month ago. Suddenly, he had a heart attack. He's, he was in his 20s. He had a, a very young uh, daughter, right? So death can come at any time. Don't think that I am young, I am healthy, uh, especially at this time, the time of uh, our, the time of a pandemic, that death can come at any moment. So it's important for us to prepare for it, right? We prepare for the inevitable. That's what we need to do. We need to prepare for the inevitable, right? And inshallah, today, uh, in the next 20 minutes or so, inshallah, we will uh, gather together um, and, and try to go through five main steps. There are many, many, of course, but there are five that I have gathered for us to, to contemplate on and try to prepare for, inshallah. I will start uh, with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa ajil fajr. Right. So, five things to do before we die. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Holy Quran? He says, of course, when we talked about death and the reality of death, he says, Kullu nafsin Now, I want you to, to, uh, to, to pay attention to this, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, every soul will taste death. Kullu nafsin now, he did not say that every soul will die. How can every soul taste death? What is that supposed to mean? You either die or you don't die. Yes? But Allah here says every soul will taste death. Yes? The reason is because what happens, what is the definition of death? The definition of death is when the body, the physical body, the flesh I have, departs and is, is taken away from the soul. So this is the soul and this is the body. We are all in one now, right? As a, as a living creature. I am still breathing. I am not dead, right? So therefore, I have the soul and the body together. What happens during death is when the soul detaches from the body. So therefore, the soul tastes death. Yes? You with me? So the soul detaches from the body so it tastes death. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, here he says in chapter uh, number 3, verse 185, he says, Kullu nafsin the when, it, when the it detaches itself, the soul detaches itself from the body, it tastes death. So therefore, what happens to the soul? The body goes down under. So now with... Our, our demise, uh, the, the, the late uh, uncle, his body has been detached from his soul, right? His body has gone into the grave, but his soul is living. His soul is not dead. The soul will not die, my dear brothers and sisters. The soul will not die, right? The soul will continue forever and ever and ever, yes? Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides what happens to it. Yes. So therefore, what we need to accept here is that I need to prepare for the strength and, and giving energy to the soul, not so much to the body, because the body will decompose under the, 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 the earth. Right. When we when we bury the, the, the body, right, the body will decompose. Correct. But the soul will continue. So it makes logical sense for me to care more about the soul than the body. Yes, I've got to care about my body. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he says, wala tansa nasiba ka minad dunya. Don't forget that you have a part in dunya. So make use of it. It's fine. You know, entertain yourself on the halal things, right? Go out with friends, do things, whatever, you know? But of course, it has to be han halal, right? But of course, what's important, more important than this, you've got to strengthen the soul because the soul will stay with you. The soul will stay with you. The soul, depending on how the condition of the soul is, you will live in uh, the afterlife before Yawm Al-Qiyamah in a, in a beautiful life or in a really bad life, right? And then in Yawm Al-Qiyamah, of course, it's your fate, right? All depending on the soul, the condition of the soul. Is the soul miserable? Is the soul full, intoxicated with so much hate, so much backbiting, so much disrespect, so much uh, bad akhlaq, right? Is intoxicated or no? You know, the body is beautiful. The body, you've got a slim body. You know, some of the boy, boys, our brothers goes to the gym. You put in these muscles, it's beautiful. But what about the soul? Is the soul so beautiful like the body? Because the body will decompose. It doesn't matter. But the body, the soul is the one that will continue with you, right? So I've got to look after this. I want to look after this soul, shouldn't I? Yes? So Allah says, Kullu nafsin maut. Now the question is, how can we prepare for the day that the soul will depart from the body, right? And I want to strengthen this soul, right? So the first thing that, that I would like to uh, uh, talk to you about, my dear brothers and sisters, is knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, I believe, I believe that we are a community that we are drifting away from knowing the essence of our religion, which is knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, all the prophets, including Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, but Prophet Muhammad had an extra role, but all the 124,000 uh, prophets had one mission, which is to know Allah and spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, to tell the people there is Allah and to explain to people who is Allah. I find, my dear brothers and sisters, our community is drifting away from this. Why? It's because we are focusing too much on what is halal, what is haram. What is najis, what is not najis. Can I do this and can I not do that? Yes, 100%. This is important. I'm not saying it is not important. I am saying, yes, we must uh, ask questions about can I do this or but Allah has given us aql, has given us intellect, right? To think, to not to always be like sheep. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, he was giving his, his letter, the letter to his, his sons, Hassan al Hussein alayhi salam. He says, people are like, uh, people, uh, they, they drift like where the wind drifts. Where the wind is drifting, I'll go after it. No, maybe the wind is drifting the wrong way. Come back. You know, you're going to come back, right? So we've got to use our intellect, right? So what I'm trying to say here is that we've got to use our intellect to know the essence of our religion, to know the principles of our religion, which is to get to know our Lord. How many of us spend time to get to know Allah? Who is Allah? I'm asking you, who is Allah? I'm going to give you 30 seconds and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to uh, belittle uh, my, my elders here who, are, who I very much respect and, and, and um, the others here, right? I'm, I'm asking myself here this question. We need to go back to principles. Before I die, I need to know Allah because Munkar wa Nakir, the angels, when I die, they ask me this question. They say, Man Rabbuk? Who is your Lord? And if I did not know Allah, the word Allah can't come out of my mouth, there are some narrations say. I can't say Allah because I didn't know who Allah is. Yes, I worship him. <clears throat> yes, I talk about him. But in here, in my qalb, 
in my heart who is Allah do you know the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes is Allah injected in your heart right so these are important questions my dear brothers and sisters Imam al-Rada says this beautifully. He says the very first steps, there's a narration from Imam al-Rada alayhi salam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. He says the very first step to Allah's worship is to attain inner knowledge of him. So some of us just go straight into worship. Allahu Akbar, I go on fast. Wait. The first step to Allah's worship is to attain inner knowledge. How many of us know the inner knowledge of Allah? And the origin of attaining inner knowledge, yes, of Allah is through his divine unity. Wahdaniyya, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? And he continues, he says, the very basis of his divine unity is to negate any kind of limitations from him. Since the intellects are able to witness that every being is created with limitations. We are, limit we are limited, my dear brothers and sisters. We are limited. I mean, I can't live without breathing. Can you live without breathing? I can't live without breathing. I am limited. I am lit limited with space. I am in this room. I am limited with space. There are four walls, right? I am limited with time. I'm given time because I might live 50 years. I might live 60 years. I will die. But Allah is limitless. Allah is not limited with space. Allah is not limited with time. Allah is not limited by certain attributes that will stop him from living. Like us, like we need to breathe. We need to eat. We need to drink. No. Allah is limitless. Allah is everywhere, my dear brothers and sisters. Not, not when we look at the sky, we say, this is Allah. No, Allah is everywhere. Allah is there in your room. Allah is here in my room. Allah is inside me. Allah is everywhere. Yes? We've got to create that culture of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not us telling people, you will go to hellfire because this is haram. This is haram, 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 haram. No, stop. Yes, the religion of Islam is a religion of love where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said so many times, if you do a mistake, if you do a sin, I will forgive you, no problem. I will forgive you. Believe in that because Allah is loving. That's how we get to know him. One of his attributes is his loves. He loves me, but he's asked me, look, I love you so much and I will take you to someone amazing, but I'm going to give you some trials. I'm going to test you to find out if you are worthy of going to these trials. But if you fall, I will pick you up. Don't worry. Inna ma'al usri yusra. With every uh, trial comes ease. With every difficulty comes ease. I will pick you up. If you fall, I'll continue picking you up. Don't worry. But without falling, you will not learn. Some of us, we fall. But we don't get up. Yes, I, I'm, 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 uh, I'm diagnosed with an illness. Right? Or, or a relative died. Or I lose my job. I lose my business. Right? I fall. Allah says, get up, get up, get up. Come on. Say, no, I'm not getting up. Why have you done this to me? No, get up. Don't worry. This is just dunya. And you will meet those who you love in the hereafter, inshallah. Don't worry. This is temporary. Right? Get up. No, no, no. Why is Allah chosen me? Why is not not this person got this trial? Why isn't this person got this illness? Why me? Right? No, get up. It's okay. There will be ease. I'm just trialing you out. I'm just trying to find you. Do you know me well? Allah says, do you know me well? I forgive you. I love you. I just want you to go through trials so that you become stronger, my dear. Yes. We've got to know Allah. And this is a big topic, my dear brothers and sisters, that I don't really have much time to talk about. But let's focus on that. Number two, my dear brothers and sisters, is remove all hatred from your heart. Now, before you die, do you really want to have so much filth in your heart? Ask yourself that question. How many people, let's make a list. Come on, let's make a list. Everyone make a list. How many people 
do we not talk to? How many people I hate? How many people you think have caused so much distress to you that you'll never talk to them? But is that, I ask you that question, is that the right thing to do? Is this what our Emma used to do? Even to their enemies. Is this what they used to do? Al-Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Why did Al-Hur come back to Imam al Hussein? Because Imam Hussein did not have hate in his heart. You do not have hate on people, but you have, you have hate on what? On actions of people. You hate killing. You hate deceiving. You hate backbiting. Yes? But not you hate individuals because those individuals are the creation of Allah. Yes, the actions they have done is the wrong action. Allah will punish them for this. But you should not hate. Because if you hate, you will only start to draw uh, black circles in your heart, black holes in your heart that will affect your connection with the Almighty. Yes? It will affect the connection with the Almighty. So we've got to remove all hate. What is hate? You know, some people ask, you know, you, you tell me to remove hate, but what is actually hate? Hate is, hate is to dislike intensely or passionately, feel extreme aversion for or extreme hostility towards, or you detest. So you, you, ex, you have extreme hostility towards an individual, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, this beautiful, look at this, this is your prophet. This is our prophet, my dear brothers and sisters. Let's be like him. He says, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ He's the same as you. He's from amongst yourselves. عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا It grieves him that you shall perish. مَا عَنِتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ He is very much concerned about you. He cares about you. Yes? Doesn't have hatred towards you. He has, he's concerned about you. He cares about us. Yes? حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also say? He says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ I hope everyone is saying this with me. In chapter 49, verse 10, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ And then what? فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ Make peace between your brethren. The believers are brethren. Sisters are sisters. Brothers are, sist uh, brothers are brothers. Therefore, make peace between your brethren. Allah, Be God conscious. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So that you be, maybe, uh, so Allah that has mercy on you. Right? How many of us, again I say, how many of us don't like other people? Maybe I have a problem with my spouse. Maybe I have a problem with my, one of my children. Maybe I have a problem with my parent. Yeah? Maybe I don't like my father or I don't like my mother. No, no, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives so much importance to birr al-walidayn. And you know this. You know this very well. There's no point in me telling you this. You know it better than I do. Birr al-walidayn. Right? There's a hadith that says that if you do not, if your parents are not pleased from you, Allah will not be pleased from you. All your worship will not be accepted. This is the hadith. It says if you... If your parents are not pleased from you, all your worship will not be accepted. It's so important. Right? Even if you think that your parents are not right, are incorrect, are wrong, must be respect in this. There must be huge respect to parents. Allah has made this so to preserve the community, to preserve the family, therefore to preserve the community. Yes? And it's important for us to preserve a community. There's a lot to talk about this. So one very, uh, well, three very quick suggestions. How can I stop hating? Examining why you hate. Let's examine, you know, just sit down with ourselves. Do this muhasaba, accountability, and examine why do you hate. Go, 
go deep into it and maybe you will find a bit of mercy in your heart Allah is so merciful we are not merciful at all we have his attributes by the way Allah has built the attribute of being forget uh, uh, forgiving and merciful in us but we don't use it it's out of order in some of us yes can you think of any counter examples to your belief maybe there is a different reason why uh, you know where you should consider not to hate that particular individual and make perhaps you should make peace with them there is some area of forgive forgiveness number two consider hating the action not the person maybe the person said something to you maybe they swore at you hate the swearing don't hate the person you understand that hate the action not the person think of hate this way healing aggressive thoughts emotion right be use your emotions in the best possible way yes to try to uh put a bit of ice on your uh sort of anger and the heart that that is burning with hatred right put of a bit of cold water into into it uh, do number three so we've talked about knowing Allah we've talked about what we've talked about don't hate and number three is do your qada worship my dear brothers and sisters whoever has qada make sure you do your qada qada what is qada so qada is if you have missed prayers if you have missed any prayers if you have missed any fasting if you have not done your hajj right if you have not paid your uh, khums, if you have not paid your zakat, yes, please do this as soon as possible. Try to do them as soon as possible. Yes. Some people have many years of doing qada for prayer. That's okay. It's okay. Try to at least do them. Don't delay them and say, oh, tomorrow I'll do them. And tomorrow comes, oh, I'm very tired. Tomorrow I'll do them. Oh, not, not tomorrow I'll do them. No, tomorrow you might die, my dear brother or sister. You might die. die. That is a reality. Don't leave it to tomorrow and the tomorrow and the tomorrow. No, start doing that. If you have, for example, one year of qaba, try to every prayer, pray two. So for Salatul Fajr, when you wake up, Salatul Subh, pray another one. For Salatul Dhuhr, pray another one as qaba. So you pray two Salatul Dhuhr, one the compulsory one, and the other one is the qada one. The other Salat al-Asr is the, is the day, that day Asr prayers. And you do another one. And keep a record. Keep a record until you finish it, inshallah. I'm sure you will. Right? What about fasting? What about hajj? Some of us are sitting on money. Oh no, I have to renovate my house. I have to make it superstar because my friend has renovated this house. Baba, have your priorities right. Hajj. Take strengthens that soul. Remember that soul we talked about? It strengthens it. And also it's wajib. It's worship. Give if you can afford it. Make sure you go to Hajj as well. Number four, work for Allah's sake and the community. My dear brothers and sisters, how many of us, how many of us have not given any time to work for Allah's sake? And the community before you go before you go it's vital that you help the ummah in any way possible shape or form in chapter 9 verse 71 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this beautiful verse he says wal wal remember he says here in a plural sense the mu'mineen the mu'mina the believers the the women and the men right right they're guardians of each other. This is the ummah. This is a community. We look after each other, right? They enjoy good and forbid evil. We will all chip in into society. If we see something is good, we enjoy it. If we see something evil, we make sure we forbid it. Yes? And keep up prayer, right? And pay the poor. And obey Allah and his messenger. Allah will show mercy to them. Surely Allah is mighty, wise. This is a, 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 a narration in Al-Kafi, volume 2, page 67. He says, Man asbaha la yahtam bi umuri al-muslimina falaysa minhum. 
whomsoever does not care, if you don't at least care in your heart about the affairs of the Muslim Ummah, you are not amongst the Muslims. And another narration it says you are not even a Muslim if you do not care about the affairs of the Muslim Ummah. If you do not care about the affairs of the Muslim community in your community, if you are Pakistani, if you are Khoja, if you are Iraqi, if you are Iranian, if you are Lebanese, if you are what Indian, if you are whatever you are, in your community you must give time, you must give some effort. I want you to ask yourself this uh, this question, my brothers and sisters, and I, and again forgive me for asking. But I want us to reflect. It's a reflective session. I'll give around 20 seconds. In a typical week in my life, how much time do I give for the community? Let me ask myself this question as well. I'll give you 20 seconds. Let's do a reflective session here. And it's not just me talking to you, but also let's do a collective reflective session. Let's assess as ourselves. You don't need to answer this question to me. Answer this question to yourself. I'll give you 20 seconds, inshallah. If it's zero, then please, my dear brothers and sisters, we need to give at least a phone call to an ill person. That's helping the community, right? Uh, I know you can't visit now, but at least a phone call, right? Where is this person? I haven't seen him for a long time, yes? Maybe uh, helping out in the ghusl of the marhumi, right? Now maybe the local mosque will need some uh, volunteers, right? We need for some volunteers. Uh, during COVID, maybe they need volunteers to take food to the elderly. Who's caring about our elderly, right? There's a lot to do, my brother. Don't say there isn't any, anything to do. There's a lot to do, right? And uh, what about teaching? Maybe you can teach the Quran. Maybe you can teach Islamic to kids, to whoever. There's a lot to do. So please do give as much time as possible. And finally, my dear brothers and sisters, before we die, we should settle any debts and we write a will. This is so important. Try to settle debts. I know that some of you can't settle the debts because you don't have, but try to chip in a bit, you know, maybe a few pounds here and there. At least you're contributing to the debt. And also, importantly, write a will, my dear brothers and sisters. You don't want to die without a will. Talk about your uh, iman. Talk about the people you love. Talk about your worship. If you have qada. Talk about your debts, right? Talk about uh, the Umrah, Hajj, if you haven't done them, Hajj especially, etc. Talk about all these things. And there is a, um, a verse in the Quran that says, Kutiba alaykum idha habara ahadukum al-mawt. It is prescribed that when death approaches you, the Malik al mawt comes to you. If they leave someone something of, of value, if you leave something of value, a will should be made in favor of parents and immediate family with fairness. And there is this particular website called shiawills.org. Shiawills, W-I-L-L-S dot org, right? Um, it is uh, by, done by the World Federation uh, of KSIMC in partnership with Africa Federation and the Council of European Jama'at, right? Uh, and the rulings according to the, uh, His Eminence, uh, Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Sistani, right? So it, it gives you an example right it builds up with you how to write a will go to visit that website until we we uh, write a will we we go through these particular steps my dear brothers and sisters uh, then inshallah we can at least say i am prepared for malak al maut to come to me we said know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give effort to knowing uh, this inner getting this inner knowledge of allah we talked about remove all this hatred from your heart we talked about what we talked about worship al qadha right? Do your qadha. We talked about, uh, of course, writing a will, right? And making sure you, you pay uh, your debts, right? And what was the other one? Uh, we talked about, of course, uh, um, caring for the community and helping uh, the people in the community give your times for the community. And with that, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us 
the best of uh, uh, health in this particular time. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the uh, arrival of our 12th Imam, Imam al-Hujjah ajjalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the opportunity to visit the shrines of Ahl al-Bayt alayhum salam and also to visit, uh, to do the pilgrimage of a hajj if we haven't done. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give shifa to all those people who are uh, doing mar- who are ill, who are sick of COVID, of cancer, of mental health. My dear brothers and sisters, mental health issues are rising in the community, depression and different anxiety and different mental illnesses. Raise your hand to the sky. Always remember those individuals who are suffering in this world. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, uh, give wealth to those individuals who are suffering financially. And finally, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us uh, prepare for death, prepare for that hadim uh, the destroyer of pleasures. Uh, and finally, we recite a uh, surah al-Fatiha uh, for the soul of uh, Khushru Fazl, the son of Ghulam Ali Fazl. Uh, before that, we do a loud, loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Surat al-Mustaqim. Subhanallah.